Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primers. Welcome to Tech Primers. In this particular video, we are going to see how to create a Spring Boot application with Spring Security enabled, which is going to use the Java Web Tokens. So this is going to be a basic example of Java Web Tokens. So I'm not going to use any database to validate the username, password or something like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a simple JWT token. I'm going to generate a token using a rest endpoint and that token I'm going to set it as a infinite um, expiration time and then I, we are going to use that token to do subsequent requests so that our application is able to validate these tokens and then allow the user to view the rest endpoint that's what we are going to see in this particular video so I will be making uh, more such videos on JWT uh, with complex use cases uh, if you want me to do any video on specific use cases with JWT, Spring Security and Spring Boot, do let me know in the comment section below. Before that, let's go and check how we can integrate JWT in the Spring Security into a Spring Boot application. So as usual, we are starting off with uh, start.spring.io. So I'm going to create a Spring Boot application. So I'm just um, going to say Comtech Primer Security. I'll uh, make this as spring boot security or I, I'll just make it as a JWT security so that it's more uh, clear that it's specific to JWT and also I'm going to add the dependencies for uh, spring web and security I also need the uh, JWT dependency so we can add that separately because spring um, doesn't have that here in this website Okay, so I just uh, generated the project. Let me unzip this and then let me open it in IntelliJ. So the project got unzipped. Let me quickly open in IntelliJ. So if you are not familiar with what is JWT, you can take a look at my uh, video which I have made on uh, JSON Web Tokens so so that you can know uh, what is JWT and why JWT is used okay so project is open uh, as I said uh, the dependencies uh, which we have mentioned are the web and the security we also need the dependency for the JSON Web Token so I'm going to say JSON Web Token dependency so the dependency is added now I'll just say import so that the project is imported so without any further delay let's go and create some classes right so as an initial start I'm just going to create a basic uh, controller so I'm going to create a controller and then we will um, add more uh, files there okay I'm going to create a controller package so that we can have specific functionalities in the package okay so I'm going to call this as a hello controller because I'm just going to say hello world as an example right so I'm gonna, not going to have a complex example here so this is going to be a spring MVC project so I'm going to add a risk controller and I'm going to say request mapping and I'm going to say rest slash hello okay and for now I'm going to say get mapping So I'm going to return hello world here right so this is just going to return hello world when I hit rest slash hello okay so that is the controller so before going into the other uh, internals of JWT we need to create some web configuration right so we uh, in order to enable security for this application we need to create some web configuration so I'm going to create a package called uh, config so this is the package which is going to have the configs uh, for our application so I'm going to create a Java class inside that so let's name that uh, class as JWT security config right and this is going to be a configuration right so I am going to annotate it with config we need to enable the uh, web configuration so I'm going to say enable web config and also once I enable web config I'm go also uh, going to enable the global web security 
for the method method level security so i'm going to say enable global method security and i'm going to say pre post enable as true by default it is false i'm just enabling it as true so that you can have annotations at the different method levels or you can have method level and method level uh, securities or the uh, controls access controls okay so our annotations are done now we need to uh, uh, override uh, sorry basically this particular configuration file needs to be extended from the web security configurer adapter so that is the uh, class which spring boot uses to bootstrap it so whichever class which executes this uh, spring security configurer adapter that will be bootstrap automatically in all the um, uh, implementation whatever we have done here will be overridden with the web default web security which we have configured so with this we have already done in the uh, other LDAP and the MySQL um, database uh, security um, configurations of a Spring Boot application here we are going to use JWT so same same way we are using the web security configure adapter okay so the major difference between that and here is we need to uh, use uh, the JWT filters instead of the um, LDAP filters or something like that because by default Spring provided LDAP filters but here we are going to create a custom filter so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some custom filter so call the J, uh, JWT authentication token filter so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say JWT authentication token filter okay and this is just a so we can create this class later so I'm not going to create it now so what do we need to do in this class is we need to provide the we need to provide a I'm going to create this class let me create it okay so let me create this so that I don't get the compilation error right so I'm going to create these classes under security so that uh, we have everything under security okay cool so the class is now created the authentication token uh, filter the JWT authentication token filter is created now we need to set the uh, authentication manager to this particular class so because we need to have a custom authentication manager which is um, what we will be creating so we need to create an authentication manager for that for that purpose so I'm going to create an authentication manager authentication manager so authentication manager is provided by spring so what I'm going to say is I'm going to say create a custom authentication manager for me okay for that what we need to do is we need to override this authentication provider manager so we need to override the provider manager okay with the custom authentication provider so this particular uh, thing which if you notice it is expecting a string so I'm gonna say arrays or I can use the collections collections are singleton list okay and I'm gonna say give me an authentication uh, provider right so we need to create a authentication provider in that case right so I need to provide an authentication provider so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a authentication provider for that so I'm going to say authentication provider so like how we created the I'll create a field so how like how we created a authentication filter here we need to provide the authentication provider as well so I'm going to name that as JWT authentication provider okay and let's go and create this class as well under the security let's come and take care of those classes later but I think it will throw an error for now so I'm going to create authentication provider it's an interface yeah it's an interface so I've just uh, added that so if you notice here there is no error now so I've created a provide authentication manager with our custom authentication provider so we can write our implementation in the custom authentication provider 
okay and these are injected as the manager into this filter so this filter is now going to have methods like set authentication manager so i'm going to provide the authentication manager here right and let's create this method okay once the authentication manager is done we can add a custom uh, success filter so uh, we can add a custom set authentication success handler right so you can add a custom uh, success handler so that you can um, redirect the request to this particular handler and do some processing if you need it right so in this case i'm going to create a jwt success handler okay i'm just going to create this class also in under security and this method as well here okay so what we have done is we have created a filter and to the filter we have assigned uh, the authentication filter manager and the authentication success handler now we just need to return this particular filter okay that's it so we have created a uh, authentication manager then we have created a filter now we need to configure uh, the our HTTP security filters right so I'm going to override uh, the configure method which is uh, giving HTTP security yeah so this particular method I'm going to override so I'm going to use the HTTP I'm going to disable the cross uh, site reference I'm going to say disable it okay because we don't need it and I'm going to say authorize all of my request so I'm going to say authorize request and I can filter out requests here I, you can do a matches here what I'm do, uh, going to do is I'm going to say authorize all my request right you can do that or uh, for example if I uh, need to uh, match only specific request you can do specific request so for example in our case uh, we can say slash starter we can do this slash rest so if you have something with the rest okay i need to authenticate to that okay and then i can say authenticated so which basically means all the requests which are having slash rest slash right those will be authenticated rest all will not be authenticated okay and what else we need so we need to have some exception handling so what we are going to do is we if uh, let's say uh, the URL is not authenticated so where should the request go right so we can add some uh, entry points here so there is something called uh, authentication entry point so this is nothing but another class uh, where you can use it uh, for redirecting the uh, error messages so we can say entry point okay I need to create the object for that here so what I will do is I'll just create a field and then inject it okay so we can create this as a jwt authentication entry point and create a class under security as well right okay so the authentic mm, the entry point is now created and what else we need so why is it showing an error I am not sure why is it okay durability authentication endpoint oh it needs a uh, okay I need to extend this I think it's interface again so I'll just say implement and then I'll implement a method called comments okay so right now I, I don't need anything uh, okay so I'm just saying nothing okay I don't need to have any exceptional handling as such so I am not doing anything we can modify that later but I'll show you when to do that right so once this is done we need to maintain our session right so I'm going to make the session stateless so that we don't have to worry about the states in the session so I'm going to create a policy so I'm going to say 
create my policy as stateless right so i'm i'm saying uh, http security that okay don't make my um, sessions stateful so i'm saying stateless then finally we need to add our uh, filters right so whatever filter we created here we didn't use it here so we need to add a filter we just say add before okay i'm going to say add the filter before um, our username password authentication filter which we used to have by default in spring so i'm going to use this filter and i'm going to say username password authentication filter dot class right so before this particular uh, filter just load my filter that's what i'm saying here right so i think that is it so what else we need uh, we also need to uh, have the cache controls for the headers so we need to say http dot headers dot cache control so we this will add some default headers to the request so first strong parameter so what does it say so it is saying that location to authentication it should be of type filter right yeah okay so i think in the filter i need to have a spring of type filter yeah that i can go and modify now i think we can um, we have created the config so we can go and create the filter now right so let's go to the filter and then uh, add the necessary implementation so this filter needs to be uh, i think it should be an abstract class right so it's an abstract authentication processing token where is that yeah, processing filter so yeah this is the abstract class which we are going to implement right so yeah we have implemented this guy now right yeah the error has gone from the config project here so we need to implement those methods and i don't need these uh, uh, as a method here right so i just need them uh, to do something because these are not required these should be coming in from yeah i think you need a super constructor yeah right you need a processing url so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say uh, have all the urls which are going to be coming in right so i'm not going to pass any url here i'm going to say slash star star right so this is going to have um, uh, this particular filter is going to be hit for every url which is having slash star star so which is basically every url right okay so now there is a method called attempt uh, authentication so he, this is the place where we need to uh, authorize our request so this is where we will be handling our um, request and then validating it so this is where the tokens will be uh, used here right so what we can do is we can now uh, take care of this later because this is we have not implemented the token yet right so this is the place where we decode the token and then we will uh, be doing it so let's look at that later so what other classes we have created we have created an entry point right so now we can go to the entry point so in the entry point we have to give some um, error message right so what we can do here is if the particular request fails I'm going to say in the HTTP server response send an error right so send an error saying the user is not authorized so for user is not authorized I can say dot unauthorized or it's a response right so you have lots of errors here so I'll say unauthorized which is going to be 401 yeah so and once it is unauthorized you can just send some message unauthorized okay I'm going to send a message saying unauthorized that's it so that is what we need in the entry point so this is where the uh, the failure messages are handled so if there is a failure with the message which came in so it gives this particular error so now let's go to the provider so the provider is where um, all our uh, major processing takes care because this is where we are going to authenticate the class right so here what I'm going to do in the support side right, the support is going to return the boolean so I'm going to check if the uh, type if that particular class is of type whatever we have here the JWT authentication tokens right that authentication token is what we need 
so we need to create a uh, we, we can create a class called JWT authentication token so I'm going to create authentication token okay I'll tell you what is that right and I'm going to say is assignable for the particular class which basically means is it an implementation of this particular class which we are getting right so and uh, I think that's it right okay and we need to create this particular class isn't it so this is the token class which will be used by um, the other classes to as a model okay so this is nothing but a model so I'm going to create this under uh, model okay and this class is not a direct model it is going to use the username password authentication token so if you notice here there is already a class uh, again, we have to implement these right so we have to create a constructor okay so we can create some I think we don't need these many right we don't need this particular constructor so uh, what we are going to do here is we are going to store the token in this particular file so I'm going to uh, say private string token so this is where I'm going to store the token right and I need to add this token right I will just say add constructor so I don't need these two uh, variables okay so I'm going to say null because by default it expects me to give those credentials and stuff I'm saying that okay I don't need it and I'll just create some getters and setters for that right and uh, there will be this um, get credentials and uh, get uh, principal method which we have to override by default it's going to return the same thing but uh, I'm going to override and then say don't return me anything so I'm going to override these two I'm going to say don't return me anything so it's null here also I'm going to say null so don't return me anything because we have already uh, if you notice here we have already passed null here because I don't want to uh, have the credentials here as I said earlier this is just going to be a simple example so I don't want to make it complicated right so we have created the token here now let's come back to our uh, uh, authentication provider so in the authentication provider we have taken care of this particular class but we need to take care of uh, the other one right the authenticate method so what we are do going to do here in the authenticate method is I think in the authentication provider we should not implement I don't know why this authenticate method came into picture so I think I need to use the uh, user details because user details already has uh, some implementation right so there should be some yeah I think I can use the abstract uh, user detailed authentication provider because that has some basic implementations I don't have to directly use the uh, interface so what I'm going to do here is instead of this particular inter interface I'm going to use the abstract user details uh, authentication provider so that it gives me some flexibility to not have this method right and it gives me some other method right yeah it gives me two methods so I'm not going to touch this additional authentication checks I, if you need any additional authentication checks you can add it but I'm not going to touch that instead there is something called retrieve user okay so this is what we need so this is the method which will be called when there is a user here so for example this is going to be a username okay and this is going to be the password token so this is the token if you notice here we just uh, handled so we created a JWT token of type username password token and that is what we need here so we are going to use that particular token here right so what we are going to do is we are going to use this token right and the, we are going to convert this into our type JWT token because that is what we receive so we are going to convert this particular token here right so we are going to convert this into JWT so 
we are going to say token equal to JWT right okay so we have done that okay from this token we need to get the string token because that is what we need right this token we just created a uh, token out of it right so I'm just going to name this as JWT token and I'm going to create the string token and uh, I'm going to use the JWT token dot get that is going to be a model right so we just uh, have the dot get token now this token is now stored inside the string token now we need to validate this particular token whether it is uh, uh, whether it is correct or not right so every time when the request comes the username comes basically and also the token comes the token um, username is not required most of the time like in, in our case we are not going to use it um, so we get the token for every request and that token we got it here as a string we just extracted it as a string now we need to validate this token so what we need to do is we need to write a validator so what I'm going to do is I'm going to type I'm going to write a validator okay let me write a quick validator right I'm going to write it here so just say component right and in this validator uh, we are going to parse the what are we going to parse here so we are going to say new I am not going to do this here I'll just do it here right this is going to be a component I'll annotate it with component and I'm going to avoid okay I'm going to use the validator to validate token right so I, I'm going to say validate right I'm going to pass the token as well and let's create this method in this validate and what we need to pass is some object right I'm not going to say what object let's create that object right so we got the token from the token how do we uh, now arrive at the arrive at the uh, user details because that is what they uh, that is what we need at that layer right so this is why we added this uh, POM dependency so we added this uh, dependency here right mm, where is that POM.xml the system is slow right if you go to the POM.xml we added this uh, io. Dot json web token right so this dependency is what going is going to help us in this particular case so we are going to create uh, something called as claims so claims if you notice here are coming from the json web tokens okay i'm just going to create a claim okay i'm just going to create a claim so in order to create a claim there is some there are there is some utility called jwts if you notice here there is something called a, a parser there is something called a builder so in our case we are going to pass the token so we are going to use the parser so the token is this JWT is going to parse the JWT message so if you notice here this is how the JWT message looks like right Java web token looks like so we are going to pass this particular message that is what this particular utility is going to help us with so I'm going to say parse and uh, <clears throat> and I'm going to create a I'm going to use the key so we need to use a secret key right so we need to have a secret key which the uh, the guy who created it and the guy who is going to parse it knows right and this particular secret is what um, we will be having here so I am going to have the secret as a let's say this is going to be a string right and I am going to have the secret as let's say YouTube okay so this can be configured so for now I am hard coding it but you can uh, you have to use this uh, secret to create generate and you can you can use the secret to parse so in this case we are parsing uh, in other case we I'll show you how to uh, generate as well so I'm going to say parse right we are going to say parse 
and we need to parse what the token that is what we are doing here right and we need to convert that into the claims so we need the body of the message right so whatever whatever jwt we parse we have header payload and stuff we need the body which is nothing but the payload so that is why we did a get body so this claims will have now the body in fact we can rename it this into body because it's just a body right and inside the body we will have the uh, messages so for example in the body we will get the subject we can we can get the subject okay so what i will do is i will create a jwt uh, user okay a pojo so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to create this particular under model okay so we can say jwt user equal to new jwt user and jwt user dot set of uh, this particular subject is going to be our username so i'm going to say it as username right so this is going to be our username this method doesn't exist let's create a setter yeah right uh, the next one would be the id uh, we can set the id and the role so id could be like a long let's say uh, let's take a long value so i'm going to say set id and i'm going to say body dot get of user id right and this is going to return as a string right so from the string we need to convert it into a long value so what we can do is long dot pops long okay we'll be getting the set id and then let's create that set id as a setter okay we have done that now finally we need the role so from the json message from the token we are going to get all these three so the token is going to have these three encoded okay so i'm going to say set role is going to be the user dot set role okay and uh, it's going to be a string so i'm going to say body dot get get of role okay I just created the setter as well now uh, what do we need we need to return this jwt user that's it right so that is what we need uh, so we will say what type of user we need to return i'll say jwt user okay that's all we need so if you notice here what we did is we used the uh, jwt uh, library to create some claims so we used a secret called youtube we assumed that from the user the user would have created the token using this particular secret and we are decoding with the same secret uh, you can have multiple uh, secrets for multiple web tokens so you can have different um, uh, see uh, different ones okay and we are getting extracting the user id role and the username from the token and then we are setting it in a model and then we are just sending that model so that in this particular place so we have that particular model here so I'll have the JWT user here. So we just created that model because we can use that model here uh, just to uh, like send it around, right? We can use that in this particular provider. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check now if this particular uh, JWT user is going to exist or not. Because what could have happened is if the if there is no um, JWT token, right? So this could have thrown an exception, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a create this outside here and then I'm going to assign this as null and I'm going to have a try catch right so yeah so if there is an exception it will just print 
okay so i'm just printing that exception so if there is no exception then it if there is an exception it will be null so i, I need to check this as null right so i'm just saying uh, if it is null then uh, throw me some exception right so i'm going to say throw new runtime exception for now i'm just going to throw some runtime exception or you can even create some custom exceptions if you are willing to okay and i'll just say JWT token is not is incorrect. Okay, that is what we need here. Now, uh, from what we got, we have the roles from this particular J user. We have the roles, right? So we need to uh, we need to send uh, the object of type user details, right? If you notice in the first uh, Spring security, I would have created a model and then I would have overwritten the user details. We have to do the same thing here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new object called um, JWT user details, right? So I'm going to create something like that. So before that, what we can do is we can get the um, uh, grant. We can get the granted authority created. So I'm going to create granted authority, okay? Because we have the roles already there, right? So I'm going to say uh, authority utils. Okay. From the authority equals, there is comma separated, whatever. And then I'm going to give the JWT user dot get role. I think I didn't create the set getters at all, right? Let's go and create some getters. So I created the getters now. So okay, I have the get role. Fine. So I have got the uh, grants as well. So this also needs to be uh, now used, right? So what I will do is I will just pass the username. What is the username? The username will be jwt dot jwt user dot get username comma jwt dot get id right and finally we need the authority and also we need the uh, token so i'm just going to send the token as well to this particular guy right i just enclose this with semicolon and i'll just say return this guy and I'll remove this and now we are going to create this particular pojo under the model right and this is going to implement the user details so if you notice here automatically this got uh, picked up so I'm going to say use the same okay 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 I don't need anything just say enter okay now we need to implement this particular guy so I'm going to say implement right now the problem is we need to implement these as well so I haven't done that here I'm going to say private string username we need the role right sorry this is not going to be role this is going to be the token the long id and finally the grants and it can say authorities right and it's this this is going to be a collection right because it's can be anything and this is going to be of type uh, granted authority okay Cool. Okay, now I'm going to use this uh, variables which we have used here. This dot username equal to username. This dot id equal to id. This dot token equal to token. This dot authority is equal to grant and authority. Okay, so we have done this now. I'm going to create the getters and setters. 
for the methods we created right okay cool so we have created the getters and setters we have the is a so okay so we have some uh, methods which we overwrote right so we have to now overwrite these methods so here there is a username so i'm going to pass the username as a username here right so apart from that i think we don't need this password because we are not having any password right and is the account non expirable true is the account not locked true right this is going to be true is credential non expired yeah true and is enabled uh, true yeah right cool i think we don't need uh, anything else so we don't need this as well right we can have the password though and then have it as well anyway cool i think that is it we don't need anything else right we don't need these setters because we are using the constructors to inject the value so we don't need these setters here we can remove them it's unnecessary right cool we have the getters and we have things here so what is it must be either abstract or why some method didn't get implemented okay maybe we can have authorities to be returned yeah okay cool yeah maybe this is necessary right so uh, where were we we created the uh, yeah we are here so we have created some user details the jwt user details so what we have done in this particular class is we uh, in the provider is we created um, a validator we validated the token and then we have now identified uh, what is the jwt user which got decoded and from the de decoded value we created the grants and then we are uh, assigning to assigning it to the spring user details which spring can use to validate okay that's what we have done here so what else we have done so we have created the entry point we have created the provider and now we need to go to the token filter okay so the token filter is where we will be filtering out the urls and then we will handling um, stuff right so what we are going to do here is we are going to use the uh, header the request and then we are going to do something here let's see what we are going to do so from the header what i'm going to do is i'm going to extract some information from the header right so the rec from the request from the http request you can do a get header okay from the header you can get a header information so uh, we need to configure what header we can uh, set so what i'm going to do is i'm going to set this uh, header as uh, let's say token okay and if the in the header if i pass this as a token then the token will be uh, so for for example let's say i'm going to pass this as authorization right i'm going to pass this as authorization so from the authorization i'm going to get this header so from the authorization i will be getting the uh, header right that is the value so if the header is null right so what do we need to do if the header is null or if the header uh, let's say starts with so i'm going to uh, use the uh, token as a prerequisite so i'm going to start the value of the authorization as token and then i give the token so i'm going to say if it is not starting with the token then throw me an exception saying okay these guys are uh, incorrect so i'm going to say throw new runtime exception um, jwt token is missing right because the token is not there right i'm going to say it is missing okay okay now what i'm going to do is now i need to get the value after the token right so i need to do some substring here so we got the token we got the header sorry we got the header and now i'm going to do a substring and then we need to get the value from the header here how many are there three plus two five six so we need to give six 
right from the substring we are getting the uh, value so the token is now received so whatever we have is here is the token and this is where we will be creating the JWT token authentication token and then sending it back so we are going to say token JWT okay and this is the token which we need to send it so what we are going to do is we are going to say get authentication manager so we are getting the authentication manager and then we are authenticating it using this particular request right so using this particular token we are just authenticating it and this is the method if you notice here this particular method is what we overrode here where we received the so where is that here right uh, not there authenticate where is the authenticate where is the authenticate Doo -doo -doo. I think uh, to attempt to authenticate fine I can't see it uh, okay why is this the, I don't know authentication filter is not throwing an error saying uh, it needs to be has a protected access why is it protected access should be public I can make this public right okay now what is this again protected access or what okay this needs to be uh, the success handler needs to be handled so we need to write that next so what we can do is we can write the success handler meanwhile uh, we can do the uh, uh, we can complete this filter so we haven't completed the filter yet so we have added the attempt to authenticate and then we have uh, triggered the authentication so this will be triggered this token will be now triggered now we need to override one more method right so there is something called successful authentication yeah so on successful authentication what we are going to do is we are going to say proceed with the next chain because we have a different filter right so we are saying that go to the next filter uh, so that we don't have to block any request here so I'm going to say request and response so yeah after this filter it will proceed to the next uh, spring filters okay so we are just overriding that here that's it nothing else now we can go to the uh, success handler this success handler what we can do is we have to uh, override the uh, sorry we have to implement it from the authentication successful handler so authentication success handler yeah so this is an interface again there is something called on uh, successful authentication so uh, i'm not bothered about uh, anything we can just add a load successfully authenticated i'm not going to do anything but you can do lots of stuff here after successful authentication if you want to have any hooks there you can have it in the successful handler that's it so i think we have everything ready mm, only thing i want to add it here is in the tokenizer is here i'm going to add again this slash whatever because i want to authenticate only the uh, filters which are having that particular url right that's it okay <laughs> what else do we need so we have added a user detail we have added a JWT. yeah now the major part is we haven't created the uh, token generator right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add one more rest controller which is going to be like a token generator right i'm going to create a token controller i'm going to say rest controller And request mapping. Token, right? I'm going to just add a token and I'm just saying uh, generate a token for me, right? Right. So I'm going to just pass the uh, username here so that we can 
see how the tokens are generated so i'm going to return the token here itself so I'm, what i'm going to do is i'm going to return this rest endpoint so whoever hits this rest uh, endpoint with the saying a token with a username this is going to generate a new token and then give it this is a path variable right So like how we created the validator where we use the claims so we have to use a similar um, uh, thing here so we have to use the uh, generator here okay so what i can do is i can create a class called uh, jwt generator token generator basically I can just say generator because we know so I'll just create this class under security right So I'm going to create, since I did a new generator, I'll just say generate and I'm going to pass the username, right? That's all I need. So I need to pass the ID and the role as well. So what, uh, for now, what I'm going to do is we have this object, right? Yeah, we have this particular object, right? So we can use the same object. So we can use the same JWT user to create a user id uh, username id and role so what i'm going to do i'm going to make this as a post so that you can pass this object so i'm going to say give a token don't send me anything i'll just say request body and i'll just say this particular object all right so i'm going to use this jwt user and then send it here directly okay and this is going to return again a string which is going to be a token right so we got the user here and inside the user we have the username all those stuff right so we need to create the claims here same way uh, like how we created in the validator we have to create the claims so we need to create a claim i'm just saying claims and in this particular case we are going to use the builder so previously we used the parser we can use the builder and if you want to uh, have the uh, token valid for only a particular period of time you can say set expiration and give that particular period so that at that particular time the token will be expired right so for now i'm going to have a infinite token so i'm not going to add any expiration to it so i'm just saying that um, use the uh, claims to set claim i think we have to create a claims here so i think this we can move it down and then we need to create a claim right so in order to create a claim there is a option called jwts.claims so this will create a claim and we need to add the values into it right previously we got the values uh, extracted the values from the claim now we need to set the values into it so i'm just going to say jwuser.get username so this is what we did in the validator right so we got the uh, value from the body and then put it inside username got the user id and then put it inside id and then roll inside whatever so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do the same thing here so i'm going to put i'm just go, i just had the i just got the claim here so i'm going to do claim dot put you can set user id comma what is that jwt user dot get id Is get ID is it uh, long? It's a long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this into a string. Then the next one will be uh, the role. So what we need to do is JWT dot get role. So that is already a string. So that's fine. So we now created a claim and from the uh, using this claim so if you notice that i created the claim here so uh, using this claim i'm just creating a builder i'm just using that in the set claim here and then i need to sign this right 
so i need to use some uh, signer algorithm so i am going to say sign with uh, signature algorithm i'm going to use uh, hs512 uh, right so i'm going to use hs512 so this is another hashing algorithm so there are different types of algorithm you can use uh, any algorithm i'm going to use the hashing algorithm and you need to pass the secret now so the secret which we had here is uh, youtube right so that is what we added there and then we are making it compact so we don't want a very big uh, token so i'm just going to say it as uh, compact so this secret is nothing but the secret which we had in the validator right so if you see here there is a secret here so it's the same secret so in the generator whatever secret we give the same is what we are using the validator to extract or validate information okay and then we are going to return this guy itself so we don't have to do with this so this is going to return this particular function is going to return the json uh, web token okay for us so that we can get that particular token and then uh, use it so the user is going to hit the token generator so the user is going to hit this particular rest endpoint okay they are going to hit the token with a post um, providing the username id and the role and then they will be getting the token back using that token they can use the hello um, this particular hello controller where we said in the config that whatever has rest slash authenticate that right that's what we did here so i think i'm done with all the code changes uh, let's quickly do an eye roll to see everything is done all these are models uh, so these should be fine i don't have to auto wire them so this entry point um, we have to auto wire we have to sorry basically add a component we have to just inject it so i have already done it validator i am auto wiring good cool uh, in the token filter token filter anyway i am doing the create right here yeah i am doing a new so i don't have to auto wire that uh, add a component to that generator anyway i am doing a new generator so i don't have to do that there as well so i don't need a new instead i can do component and make an auto wire right there I can just add constructor auto. Cool. So that's it. In the success handler, success handler should be fine. That also we are doing a new in the new in here. Yeah, we are doing a new. So we should be good. So we don't need a validator. Yeah, validator is having component. That's it. And the other uh, stuffs are the property files. So uh, I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some uh, default port. So right now I uh, in my uh, machine uh, the 8080 is used by Jenkins which I installed some time back, I'm not using it, but still um, it is having the port by default configured. So I'm going to say server.port equal to 8083 or 84 basically. I just uh, wanted some port which I can use it uh, for uh, running this application. So that's what I have done here. And uh, let's add some application YAML. So we need some basic uh, configuration there for Spring security. So what we are going to do is we are going to enable the spring security. So we are going to say management, right? Security enabled true. So this will enable spring security and also we are uh, enabling the spring resources chain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say spring resources chain uh, enabled true. So that's it. So we don't need anything else uh, apart from that we should be good okay so let's go and quickly start the application and then we'll know what is happening i hope i have done it so there are too many code changes but i i, I haven't remembered everything i have done whatever i could so let's see if there is any error we'll try to debug it i think i have not auto it here so. And it is starting Java 9. I don't want Java 9. I'll just change the compiler to use Java 8.
okay so this is start again with java 8 Token controller defined in uh, what did it say? Dependencies of some of the being in application form a cycle. Okay, well, oh, oh, okay. So it is saying that there is a cycle inside. Okay, so the token I'm injecting the generator. Oh shit, I should have used generator here. Why did I do it? okay so I think it did a controller in itself that's why it came a loop so this should now work hopefully so I have the uh, postman client as well so let's see yeah this should be slash local host colon 8084 right what did I add yeah looks like the server is up without any interruption so I have 8080 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the browser to hit the um, hello rest endpoint so this should return us some error saying that okay the user is not authorized but if you notice here we are allowing it right so that means there is a problem there is a problem in the filter maybe I don't know where uh, let's see filter. so I think here what I'll do is I'll remove this because I think we allowed everybody to go in that is what happened uh, but this should filter us let's see what happens let's, or uh, I would have screwed up somewhere in this particular uh, regex pattern I guess and let's check if this works if it still doesn't work then yeah J JWT token is missing yeah I think there was a that was a problem so if you notice here what this guy is saying is the JWT token is missing so this is nothing but the check which we added here right where is that check in the entry point oh no not in the entry point uh, where is that yeah in the JWT authentication token filter so here the server is now expecting the token to be sent if the token is not sent it says that okay the token is missing so you cannot do anything right so if I hit the uh, token rest endpoint I think I should get the same error here yeah. I think I'm getting the same error here right yeah so basically all the URLs are getting filtered here but I don't need that so that is why I added this particular rest slash but looks like that rest slash is not working so maybe I can try this because I want the uh, token to be allowed the slash token should be allowed so that I can create the token right so which should be uh, allowed for everyone without having to add any authorization in the header right So the server is up again. Yeah, if you notice here, uh, now it is saying that get is not supported. That means the token is allowed. But same way, the rest slash hello should not be allowed. Yep, still we are getting the same error. So that means rest slash hello is now secured and token is not secured. So let's go and quickly pay. <coughs> so let's go and quickly create the token here. So I'm just I'm just doing a token for post, and I'm not adding anything in the header. In the body, I need a raw. I need just the. So what do I need to send? I need to send uh, this JWT user, right? Yeah, I need the username, ID, and the role, right? So what I'll do is I'll just say username. 
as uh, Peter. ID, I'll just mention it as 1, 2, 3. Okay. okay, so what else is there? Role, right? Role, I'll just say admin for now. So we are not checking anything for uh, specific to the role in this particular example. We are just trying to create a uh, token from this. So if the token gets created, we can use that token to use it. Right. So if I did a post, what did it say? Uh, unsupported media type, HTTP media not supported. Uh, I think I have to add some headers. I think I made it as text. I just made it as JSON. Okay. So I made it as JSON. This should uh, return me something. But if you notice here, uh, the JSON it is saying some error. Why is it showing an error? Hmm. Line number seventy-six. There is a comma. There is a L. Okay. I shouldn't. Uh, yeah, I shouldn't have put L because in Java we have L. And if you notice here, mm, we got a successful response. This successful response looks like something big, right? You notice here there are three segments to it. The first segment has some message and then a dot. Second segment has some message and then a dot. And then the third segment again has slightly bigger. So this is nothing but the JWT. If you notice here, this is how a JWT looks like. A Java a JSON web token looks like this. Okay, so successfully we got this particular token. Now we can use this token to send the rest endpoint. Right? So what I do is I'll just uh, add the same hello localhost 8084 slash rest slash hello now i'll do a get and see it should not allow me so if you notice here we got the error saying jwt mess token is missing however now in the header if i am if i am adding this uh, authorization right authorization so, right that is what we added as a key right in the, in the provider here in the token filter right in the token filter we added authorization as the header right and then we added the value as tokens right so i'm going to add the same thing here i'm adding authorization and in the value i'm going to say token space that whole big jwt message okay so we generated the token using the username and username which we provided and we are now using that uh, value which got generated and then we are going to hit the rest endpoint yep if you notice here we received hello world so if we don't send this particular header if i remove this and send we are getting saying jwt token is missing but if i enable this and send it is now successfully returning the message so if let's say i am giving some wrong value here right accidentally let's say i give wrong value if you notice here jwt token is incorrect it is saying now so previously we got is missing now it is saying incorrect this is the other check which we had where we are validating whether the token is perfect so now it is saying incorrect if i provide the right one right if i provide the right one it says hello world if i don't provide this it says jwt token is missing okay so this is how you can use your um, spring boot application to authorize using jwt so i'll just summarize what we did uh, that code is too much. I don't know how much time it took for uh, the whole video uh, But I'll just uh, summarize what we did. So as a part of the security configuration, we added uh, the Authentication manager we created an authentication provider and then injected that authentication custom authentication provider into the manager and um, We created a authentication filter the token filter which can filter out and check whether the token is there or not uh, basically this can handle or validate the tokens that is why we are using this filter and we can add some success handlers and then we can see whether the uh, request or response is success or not um, then we can control our http security urls based on some uh, url rejects patterns and then say only these should be matched or only these can be authorized and if there is an exception we are redirecting it to a um, uh, authentication entry point where we can just say uh, what is happening so for example we showed that the token is incorrect so authentication exception handling will handle that if, it, if the token is incorrect uh, and also we have managed the session as stateless so we mentioned that the session should be stateless uh, the filter whatever we created here we just added here into the http headers and then finally we made the headers as cache control okay so that is about the configuration so coming back to the controller so we just added a rest controller which is having rest slash hello nothing else okay 
we created a token controller which is having a, a token generator so the token generator is going to generate our uh, token so inside the generator we created some claims which is coming from the J json web token library we created a claim with the username user id and the role which we passed so in the uh, postman if you see the first message which we gave right so that is what we passed we gave a username as peter we gave the id as one two three we gave a role as admin this uh, that is what was coming here and then we are putting and creating a json message here so this is what creates the json token using the hs uh, fight well algorithm and using the secret key called youtube so this is a secret key which we are not passing it here but the server already knows it right that is why this particular secret key is hard coded here okay so that is what we did in the token controller so the token controller generated the token and gave it using that uh, generated token we hit the hello controller the rest slash hello right now we created some models uh, for the um, entry point we, uh, for the entry point if there is an error we just said if it is not uh, if it, it won't be authorized um, for the provider authentication provider we added some validation here so we created a validator jwt validator uh, using the same uh, library we are de-tokenizing de basically that whole json web token is now extracted basically you are parsing it using the same secret key which we had called youtube and then we are getting the message uh, for the username id and role okay so that is how we know that okay the user is correct okay so we got that message we validated and it the user is present so once a user is present what we do is we just send that to the um, uh, spring security frameworks the, the security framework which is inside spring which is going to have the uh, user details so that is why we created this jwt user details here and then we gave it back okay so that is how uh, uh, jwt is integrated into spring security uh, inside a spring boot application so this particular project i'll be uploading it into github uh, right now so you can uh, the, i'll leave that link for the github link in the description below uh, just check that out and then try it out um, and also i forgot to mention that we had added some properties here so uh, just basic ones right so just uh, check that out and then try it out you don't need any database or anything to try this you can just um, uh, follow this i'll just add a readme uh, here so that you can uh, follow that okay so that's it for this particular uh, video so if you want to make uh, make me uh, any specific topic uh, drop that in the comment section below or if you want me to modify this whole example of jwt into something uh, better uh, for example database integration or something do let me know in the comment section below i'll make a subsequent video for that hope you like the video uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it if you like the video go ahead and like it meet you again in the next video thank you very much